Greetings folks, today I'll show you how to paint one of my custom High Fleets, High Fleet Aranax. High Fleet Aranax is a very warm color scheme. As you see here, I have based the miniature in a Wraith Bone uh, from Citadel Paints. I'm going to then apply a dry brush of Rubik, oh sorry, yeah, Arc Armor Gold. And after I apply this via dry brushing, dry brushing will help highlight each of our parts on the exoskeleton that we want to be having a little gold color. This gold color is a little thin, but I just added a little bit of an orange to it to help it stick to this body. Now the reason why this miniature is going to use heavy coats of gold is because I am basing this off of gold dragons from D&D. Hence the name Aranex. Aranex is a dragon in Dungeons and Dragons from the Exceden lore that resides in Waterdeep. That's about as much as I remember from good old Aranex. As you see there it's picking up all the gold pigmentation and making the standing out parts of the sculpt even brighter. We're also going to be hitting all this with a Seraphim Sepia wash to really set the color onto this miniature's exoskeleton. And after the exoskeleton we'll be hitting up the rest of it and adding some extra detail. Eventually I'll create a video on how you too can make your own high fleet. Well, design wise, and possibly give you some ideas. I for one really enjoy Tyranids, and I'm probably going to have a lot of Tyranids on this channel that I'm painting up. Maybe even showcase my own personal Tyranid armies, and show you tips and tricks on how to make them more personalized. Tyranids are a really fun model for me to work on, not only painting wise, because there's so many things you can do with them, design wise, but also just their overall theme. Eaters of worlds, civilizations, planets, going from planet to planet in the 40k lore and just consuming everything in sight. Always adapting. Ready to purge and consume anything on that planet, sentient or not. They have no remorse. There we are. Yeah. Our wraith bone is now a golden tinted bone white. I'll be slapping some seraphim sippy on this little guy. Right after I clean my brush. Now for this, we are only going to apply the sepia onto the exoskeleton, not the carapace, which are the plates you see on the tyranid. And we're also going to leave the weapons alone with that too. We'll come back to those later. Just apply a good amount all over the body. And then once this is done drying, we will apply another lighter coat. our gold. As you see, I've already touched up a few of the carapaces I was trying to not touch with this wash on the legs. That is fine, we can go back and fix that up. But as you see, the sepia really makes those gold parts that really stuck out pop out even more and give the bone a nice natural look. Very warm, natural look that we were going for. Just get it all over the exoskeleton. And don't forget that rib cage. Now the reason why you should use a heavy amount of this shade on this step is just so not only it has easier time seeping to all the cracks, but to help tint our color, co our bright color combination 
even more. So that way we have an easier time not only separating what parts we need to color, but it will just add that extra effect to how our miniature is looking. One more little dab should do it. Just let it pull into the recesses. As you see, it's already starting to darken the gold we had on it, so it's easier to see. The wash is seeping to all the nooks and crannies, the crevices, and really making the outer parts of the sculpt pop even more. Alright, we will put this down and let it dry for about one to two minutes, and we'll be back to touch up the rest. Alright, now that that is dry, we are going to get a little bit of Blood Angels Red on our brush. We're going to be using this to color up the vents, giving it a much darker tone. I'm going to just put a little bit of water into this so that way it's not too dark of a red. We almost want to make a red wash with this contrast paint. Alright, now we're going to touch up As you see, it's already making a big difference. I'm just going to put this all over the vents. And the segmented creases within the exoskeleton that you see up in the legs and the arms. This will help separate each segmented part in the exoskeleton from the other. And have a little more depth to this miniature. Now, it might be a little tedious at first, but no worries, you'll get the hang of it. These models have a lot of detail, and I enjoy a lot of detail in my work, but honestly, sometimes it does get a little repetitive and tedious with these. Just a little more there, some right here. Now that we have each of the vents done, we're actually going to go to the chest here and use a larger amount of our red. Just get into each of those cracks. Really fill it up. I'll give it a nice look as you see going on right there. And if you hear any snoring, I apologize for that. That is my dog in the background. She is currently sleeping. Alright, as we're letting those dry, we are going to get the same Blood Angels Red contrast paint and apply it to the guns. Well, bio-organic mechanical guns that are called Flesh Borers for the Tyranid Army. 
They're not used a lot in the game from players. I use them sometimes. They're pretty neat. I mean, they're they're pistols. Nothing special, but they help with a Tyranid fleet that moves very fast and covers a lot of ground to just help get in a few shots here and there. I also like the look of them. There's just something about these that of the spine fists that look great. And I also realized I called them flesh bores earlier. Those are not flesh bores. Spine fists. <laughs> Alright, now we'll let that dry for about a minute or two, and then get back to work on the rest of our miniature. Now that that is dry, we are going to be touching up the carapace on the back, head, and the two spine fists with a base of flash gets yellow and then once that yellow dries we will apply our arc armor gold heavily on it to give it a nice depth of golden color make it as bright compared to the rest of the body since the gold is a very thin paint Now this color scheme is a bit of an experiment since I've only really tried to make this high fleet I've made for fun. Twice. So there will be some improvement. So far the improvement compared to the old one is actually using Seraphim Sepia instead of the Flesh Shade. The Sepia really complements the Wraith Bone and the Dry Brushed Gold a lot better than the other. Gives it a more natural, fleshy look. With that gold tint, of course. Now this particular model, you can use it really for any high fleet you desire. But for it, to be as close as possible to another, you can use it for like High Fleet Kraken. Or. Hmm. Or High Fleet Leviathan or Tiamat or whatever. Any of the High Fleets that have a very light skin tone. But honestly, you can use this Tyranid for anything really. While that yellow is drying, we're actually going to get a little bit of our. Palette white flesh and apply it to the hooves and the claw. That way you can have yourself some cool little claw bits. Hmm, okay. And we'll just apply the pallid white flesh all over the hooves, talons, and these little claws at the end of the gun and the teeth as you see it's really bright compared to the rest of it so that way you can easily see it going to use my nail style brush that I've used in another video to help get these teeth right here a lot easier.
Now really this color scheme is just for fun and also experimenting a little bit. If you actually do like it, then you can use this video to help with the rest of your army. If not, perhaps you can maybe improve on it with your own style. Alright, now that those are drying, we will work on the carapace with our heavy layer of arc gold onto the yellow carapace. This will help not only make it the gold color will give a foundation for this paint to set on better, but it'll also make it brighter compared to the rest of it, as you already see it happening there. And then once it's dry, we will also be hitting this with a lighter amount of the sepia shade. Just making sure I got every piece of it painted. Alright, and we will let that dry for about a minute or two and we'll go back to the wash stage. Alright, now that it's dry, we can begin our next and almost third to last step. We are going to get some of our Seraphim Sepia and put it into each groove between the carapace plates. That way it will help separate each plate better since it is a very bright color on the carapace. Actually, a better color for this would be a very thin amount of Black Templar contrast. One, my brush is a little wet. I should have let it dry better. But this will make it more darker. We actually want to mix it just a little bit with our sepia wash on our wet palette. There we are. Now it's starting to separate each plate. It also help shadow each plate a little better too. Alright, now for the final touch, we will get our same Black Templar Contrast Paint. 
get a small amount on our fine tip brush and then apply it to the eyes of this tyranid. This will help make the eyes darker than the rest of it. Give it a sort of nice sunken eye feel too, if you use a lot more like that. Now using your same brush, we are going to get just a dab of Corax White on it and apply it to the very upper left corner of the eye. give it a reflective look. And there we are. One Termagant from High Fleet RNX with Flesh Borers. I call them Flesh Borers again, my bad. <laughs> with Spine Fists. That concludes the video for today. Feel free to leave a comment, like, subscribe, Whatever you feel. I'm not going to force you. And perhaps even leave a comment on your other favorite Tyranid hike fleets that maybe you want to personalize a little more and want a video on. Other than that, have a good day, folks.